Tony here, watching the ups and downs of Trucker Josh, Poison Oak and all. Have a good day. Good morning, folks. I'm in Brandon, just going from the truck stop, I stay at the Husky, down to my customer, which is, I guess, on the uh, south east side of Brandon, on the 110 here. And I drop off these big steel coils I got on my trailer. I've had them on me for three days now. I don't want them. They're weighing me down. I don't like them anymore. Really heavy. Continue 4.3 kilometers, and keep left on 110. So hopefully this will be quick. They told me not to take my tarps and chains off until I get there. Apparently some drivers like to take it off at the truck stop and then, or take the tarps off at the truck stop so they don't have to do it with the customer. Sometimes that 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 is nice for the customer because they don't have time for you to take your tarps off and roll them up on their yard because they're busy, they got to line up the trucks. But uh, other times like this, they ask you to leave it on. They want to see that it was properly tarped. Probably want to take some pictures of it so that if there's any discrepancies, if there's any damages, you know, they can blame me. Which is good. I mean, I had to take pictures of it before I tarped it and after I loaded it. So they just want to make sure that nothing happened on the way here. It is my responsibility. And I should be held accountable. But I've been very careful with it, very careful. It's hard not to be careful with it, it's so heavy, I can't go very fast, it takes me forever to speed up and forever to slow down. So I, I pretty much just put it my way through Ontario. <laughs> I'm not worried about there being any damages. I've never actually been to this part of Brandon. I don't go into Brandon very often. I go past it all the time, but I never actually go into the city. It's the second largest city in Manitoba. I have no idea how many people would live here. Someone in Brandon could tell you in the comments. I'm guessing probably 100,000? Is that too much? I wouldn't think more than 100,000, but I could be wrong. But that's my guess. Manitoba is not a very populated province and that, there's, there's a reason for that. Nobody wants to live here and that's okay with us. <laughs> It's okay with me. I, I like the seclusion, the quietness. In 1.2 kilometers, keep left on 110. I like how there's hardly any traffic ever. I like how property values are much lower because they can't put them too high. People already don't want to live here. <laughs> and it gets down to minus 50 degrees Celsius all winter. And what? 40 degrees Celsius in the summer. So we're looking at a at down to minus 50 Fahrenheit to 100, 105, 110 sometimes Fahrenheit. That's the we, we, we have a lot of fluctuation in Manitoba. Keep left on 110. Don't get me wrong, I love my home. I just like it exactly the way it is. I don't want there to be a whole pile of traffic. You stay there, stay, stay! You didn't stop at the stop sign. Mr. Harris. Drive 3.8 kilometers, then turn right on 33rd Street. Shame on you. Now you're on YouTube. I know a lot of people don't understand how I just like it to be, you know, secluded, quiet, not a lot of people, low property values. They say, oh, that's bad, that's bad. No, that's good. No, I want property values to stay the same. I don't want them to go up. Because as soon as, like, you know, a whole big group of people pile into an area, what happens? housing market skyrockets, right? People do that to get rich. But then what they don't think of is that their kids can't afford a house then. If the housing market keeps going up, no, 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 let's keep the population, let's just stay where we are right now, let's not change anything. Because I want my kids, when we finally have them and they grow up, I want them to be able to afford a house. You know, if you keep skyrocketing the housing market because there's not enough homes, well, how are they ever gonna afford a house? Everything's already skyrocketed so much because there's a shortage of everything, right? Because there's so many people being piled in. No, 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 no. 
let's just coast, all right? If anything, we should bring the housing market down a few notches, but I know that would hurt everybody because then everybody loses on their investment, including me. You'd have to take a hit. But if we could just keep it at the same, so that if I bought my house for a certain amount of money, you know, in 10 years, if I could sell it for the same amount of money, not lose any money, just get the money back that I put into it, that's good. It's a good thing. I don't need to make a bunch of money on selling my house. My kids need to be able to afford a house when they grow up. We can't keep raising everything. That's just my rant for the morning. That's my main reason for uh, just wanting to keep things the same. Let's just coast. In 1.2 kilometers, turn right on 33rd Street East. Cost of living is so expensive in Canada. I live in a very low cost of living area. But you go to Vancouver or Toronto, places that are that draw huge amounts of people. There's people moving there in droves constantly. The city's growing so fast because people come from everywhere to move there. You know what that does? <coughs> Shoots up the housing prices. Now you can't find a house in Toronto or Vancouver, like a two bedroom bungalow for under a million dollars. Who can afford that? No, 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 you grew too fast. <laughs> Coast for a little bit. Turn right on 33rd Street East. Anyways. I guess I was on my mind. What happened? Okay, I gotta turn. Oh, here's my customer. Okay. Oh, nice big yard. Oh, they got a garage. Oh, can I unload indoors? Can I unload indoors? I'm excited. I might get to unload indoors. Well, I know I skipped a bunch, but uh, we're empty. I had to quickly get that unloaded. They were in a little bit of a rush, so that's okay. We were indoors though, so that was nice. I had to take my tarps off outside though, in the wind. It sort of sucked, but that was all right. At least we got to unload inside. Oh, I can already feel how light we are. Nice people here, really nice people. All right, and now we need to go back to the yard and then we go home. We're home till Tuesday now. I requested an extra day off just because I missed my wife. And I got a lot of stuff to do at home and two days isn't always enough. Especially in summertime when I have so much yard work to do. It's ridiculous. And I want to spend time with her too, right? And I'd like to go see my, my buddy James. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Woo! I am sweating like a pig. I need to pull over here and change. I am soaked. attempting to pass there. He had like the patio on the back of his tanker for some reason. Oh, here's a cop up ahead. Hey, maybe you want to pull this guy over. He's on his phone. The guy behind me now. You saw how I was passing him, right? And then he speeds up so that I can't pass him. Sits beside me. Oh, now of course the cop's not going to be. The cop was looking down. That cop I mean, that, cop, that trucker uh, sped up while I was trying to pass him, right? And he comes up, sits right beside me, not even looking at me, looking down at his phone, texting. Our, our, our cabs were right beside each other. I was looking straight over at him. 
He's there sitting there texting along and starts speeding up a little bit, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, not letting me pass him, and I'm governed, right? So I honk at him, looks over at me, shakes his head, goes back down to his phone texting right beside me. I lay on the horn again. I give him one of those, like, what are you doing looks? He gives me one right back, like, what's your problem? Well, besides the fact that you sped up when I was passing you, which already got on my nerves, what are you doing texting and driving when I'm right beside you? Okay, I really don't care what you do in the cab of your truck when you're alone on the highway and there's no one beside I'm right beside you, man. You're not even watching where you're going. <laughs> and now he's slowed down. Now he's way behind me. Probably still texting away. Well, you know, I know it's illegal, but I'm never gonna like rag on a driver for doing that. Whatever. If you want to do that, that's you're just, as long as you're alone on the road. But I, I I don't recommend it because it's illegal. Okay. Don't say Trucker Josh said it's okay when the cop pulls you over. Okay. You're gonna get a ticket if you get caught. Just at least. Okay. At least don't do it when I'm passing you or when you're passing me. That's my only request. That got on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> what bothered me the most though was that he looked at me in, in, as if I was the problem. Like I was honking at him. Like he didn't know what I like he didn't know what he was doing wrong. For Pete's sake. I don't even know if you're Pete, but for Pete's sake. But you know, we're all sort of guilty of that. Nobody likes being called out when they're doing something wrong. I don't like it. When I when I get called out and I know I'm wrong. I get embarrassed, just like everyone else, right? And the first reaction when you get embarrassed is anger, right? You're angry that someone called you out and caught you doing something you shouldn't be doing. You're angry, so you blame it on them, the people who called you out. I think that's human nature, so I don't hold it against that guy. It's just... Uh, little things like that bug me on this. It's a pet peeve, I guess you'd say. Pet peeve. Not a big deal. Diesel, can you lay down, please? We're moving. Can you lay down? I know you can. Okay, you gotta shake it off. All right, buddy. Can you lay down now? Kids, they don't listen. Lay down, buddy. Thank you. I feel much better when you're laying down. Good boy. Unless he's coming to the front to sit up here with me. Sometimes he just stands back there and stares at me. It's creepy. So uh, I'm coming up to Headingley here now. I'm gonna pull into the truck stop, grab some fuel. I don't know if that guy's gonna pull in too and grab fuel too. I hope he doesn't come and talk to me. Unless if it is to apologize. But sometimes when you catch people, like I said, when you embarrass people like that, they get mad at you and they'll come and yell at you later, right? I try not to let myself go that far, but I don't like being called out either, but it, it's good to be called out. I want people to call me out when I'm doing something wrong. I tell my family that too. I've even told my in-laws that. I said, if I ever do something douchebaggy, or if I ever do something that, you know, doesn't serve the best interest of others around me, you know, call me out on it. Tell me, let me know. Don't just let me go on in ignorance or in whatever. Well, let me get away with it. Sometimes everybody needs a little correction because some, sometimes you don't see it yourself, right? You don't see it. You don't know when you're making a mistake. It's just a good idea to confront people calmly and with love and gently and not, you know, throw it in their face. You know what I mean. You guys are probably all really good at this stuff, right? And the scales open. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. I hate scales. I'm empty, though. They better not pull me in for an inspection, though. I want to go home. I should have taken Roblin. Could have gone around this scale. Oh, well. Oh, well. I'm all sweaty and disgusting. They don't want to see me right now, anyways. I stink. I really don't like scales that are open. I think they work much better when they're closed. You know, just put them there so it looks like you're enforcing things, but don't actually... <laughs> okay, I'm lying. It's, it's good that you enforce them because there's some drivers out here that really do need a good spanking every now and then. I get it. I get it. 
I'm thankful that we have laws here that uh, you know regulate our industry. Otherwise, you know how people are. Look how many bugs are on my windshield, though. Eh? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means we're in warm weather. All right, buddy. He's saying next axle, move. Come on, buddy. Come on. I'm impatient. I want to go home. Oh, the guy's right behind me now. Oh, hey, maybe he'll get pulled in for an inspection. <laughs> is that is that wrong to wish that on somebody? That guy I was talking about before, he's right behind me. Well, this guy in front of me got the got the green light. Okay, so you gotta stop here unless if they wave you forward. And he's already saying next axle, so I'll just put my first axle on the. They're giving me the green light already. Cool. You see, now that's a nice, a nice scale lady in there. I think it was a lady. You never know nowadays. Could have been a guy with long hair, or it could have been a, I don't know. I guess we'll just say what appeared to be a female officer inspector in there. Gave me the green light, so I got out of there before they changed their mind. So this is Headingley right here. It's sort of like a, an intro to Winnipeg, heading east from the west. It's, it's Winnipeg. It's just on the other side of the perimeter highway. It all connects, but it is its own little town, I think. I don't want to be in this lane, buddy, so I hope this Arnold Brothers guy is slow so I can get in front of him. If I was loaded, I would never be in this left lane. And I, I don't even like being here empty. This was kind of fluke. I couldn't get back into that right lane because there's a big creepy van. One of those like molester vans that wouldn't let me in there. Oh great, he's empty too. Oh great, okay, so I can't get in front of him. Wait, no, no, I got him. I got him, I got him. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> You're mine, Arnold. You're mine. I own you. That's right, here it comes, here it comes. And slipping in front. Give him the four ways as a sign of victory. Oh, they got a new Canada flag over there at the Husky. They got a smaller one. Why would you get a smaller one? If anything, you should get a bigger one. And one last fuel up before going home. It's already 1.30, yikes. I'm not gonna get home till supper. All right, let's fuel her up and we'll be all ready to go to Lincoln, Nebraska on Tuesday. That's where we're headed to. And from there we go to St. Joseph, Missouri and then back home. So I got my whole next week planned out already.